Hi, Pet the Podcast Editor here. Have you ever fallen into the trap of flashy Instagram business gurus selling overpriced lies and empty promises? Well, in today's episode, Dan and Lloyd discuss the 10 marketing lies you've been told. 10 exit. Ah, oh, yeah. So there's a well-known marketer that's got a book called 10X. Nice. Called something like that. Um, and his whole mantra is 10x everything. You'll also hear Lloyd give his own spin on some popular marketing phrases. Build it and no one will know you've built it. Build it and shout about it and people might come. Sounds rubbish, but that's what they should say. Right, let's get stuck in. Lie detectors at the ready. This is episode 95 of the Business Anchors podcast. We're just a couple of business anchors. Welcome to the Business Anchors podcast. This jingle is slightly too long. This jingle is slightly too long. Well, it does sound like a bit of a weird one, but for any marketer listening, we're going to be shining the light on some of the things that lots of people talk about in the marketing world that we don't believe are true. And I think understanding um, understanding why these things aren't true will help you improve your marketing. So hopefully it's going to be an interesting discussion. It will. So we're going to be talking about lies that are often told in the market. That sounds quite... Uh, that what, Are people lying to people? Also, that? this is subjective as well. So oh, the, this okay. is our opinion. So again, anything you hear, take with a pinch of salt. But our opinions are better than anyone else's opinions. True. So that kind of balances yeah, it out. Yeah, true. So Lloyd, tell us one of your marketing lies. What have you heard in the marketing world that you don't think is true? Okay. Um, I'll tell you what you should do. You should do an analysis on your local competition. Okay. Right, okay. I'll tell you why I think that's not good. Yeah, okay. Because I think you should be aiming higher than that. So, mm. um, so often businesses are told to, right, what you need to do, analyse what your local competition are, which... To an extent, I don't think is a, is a bad... Competitive research is yes, helpful. Yes, competitive research, helpful. But I think people are really limiting themselves in this new online new online age. Not new, sound like an absolute boomer there. Uh, <laughs> now we've got the interweb to use. <laughs> um, I don't think people should be comparing themselves to the business down the road that does the same. And, I, well, I suppose I don't want them only to compare themselves mm. to that. And go, how can we be... So we're a locksmiths. We're Mr. Locky Locksmiths. Yeah. And you're going, oh, there's there's Mr. Padlock Locksmiths down there. We we just need to make sure we're better than mm. them. I think look at the biggest locksmith in the USA. Look at the biggest locksmith in Sussex. Mm. Look at the biggest locksmith in Essex. And the best what the best businesses are doing, mm. and compare yourself to that and take inspiration from that rather than saying I'm going to compare myself to the one that's closest to me and just trying to be a bit better than that. And we've even got a lot of value from looking at other businesses completely outside our industry. Mm -hmm. So that could be useful as well. Like we get some of our biggest inspiration for our own marketing from campaigns that are being run in other countries for completely different businesses yeah. for our own kind of content and that kind yeah. of thing. And inspirate, you know, in our scripts, get your ins we get our inspiration from massive global or british comedies and sitcoms and the comedy in that rather than can anyone think of a funny advert they've seen mm. no like you're saying outside of your industry looking for that inspiration looking for the best of the best and aiming for that rather than can we just be a bit better than this company that's yeah and it, it can be the same for big brands as well you know if you're um if you are a drinks brand right i'm corona that mm -hmm. took me a while yeah um and that's a, a big brand that probably will be looking at other competition but looking outside of their industry for competition like who's who's marketing their product in the best way not not mm. which beer is marketing their product in the best way who out of all the businesses in the world is doing something that we can take inspiration of and improve our own business so competitive research is still good yeah but just doing it no no but what you're saying is just don't do it on just a local level yeah. do it on a global level and look at the real big players because yeah. you can learn a lot from that we have even small businesses we've got the internet now you mm. can look at a business that's like yours in south africa that's mm. smashing it and take inspiration from them 
you, you can have access to every business in the world basically now. So take advantage of that. That would be mine. So do you want to go ahead with yours, Dan? Yes. Okay. Have you ever heard build it and they will come? Do you know what, Dan? <laughs> I have. <laughs> and it was actually on my list. You stole it. <laughs> I, I just think this is absolute rubbish. I, imagine like if this was true, our jobs... Well, we wouldn't have jobs, would we? Because hmm. we're marketers that help get attention to... I think the true thing is build it and probably will no, one, no one will know you've built it. Yeah. That should be the saying. Yeah. I mean... It sounds like a crap saying though, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So there's so many things trying to fight for our attention that um, it's important as a business that we need to work hard to go out there and be one of the things that are captivating our customers' attention rather than just being part of the noise. Yeah. I think it's a little bit vain, actually, this whole build it and they will come. You basically, you're saying, if I build a business or do something that's good enough, people mm. will find me. And so my next one is anyone can can build a business and market a business that's going to make you millions. Um, because from personal experience, I think even though I'm good at a lot of business stuff, without you, I couldn't have had a business as successful as this. So I think mm. the thing online of people saying like, it's really easy to build and market a new business. Or not, they don't say it's easy, but they say you just need to buy this yeah. $5,000 course and then you'll anyone can do it. I just think it isn't true. There's so much more to think about than you think when starting out. Mm. At least we, we talk about this a lot, how we've got completely different sets of skills and yeah. it works really well. Mm -hmm. um, and at the start, if I, would, if I would have known how many different things you need to know to run a successful business, I probably wouldn't have started yeah. one. Yeah, definitely. And I, I don't know, I think there are, for, for lots of people, they would be far better, far happier, far more successful make more money like uh maybe managing a department in a business or being a brilliant mm. freelancer at what they do than than trying to build a business that's going to make them millions because i think there's a specific sets of skills that not everyone does have or would be suited but i to. guess you don't know until you start like how mm. did we know that we would really enjoy this uh, we didn't did we no so so i don't I, I think it's fine for people to try and run businesses what i don't think is good that people that say anyone can do this mm. because you should definitely try if it's what you want to do and i'm not saying people shouldn't try new things but don't then if it doesn't work don't think well there must be something wrong with me because mm. they said anyone can do it because mm. the truth is building a business and marketing a new business or brand or product or service is really difficult mm. so um sometimes it's you, you your skills might not be suited to that but i'm not saying don't try just mm. I don't like it when people, these gurus say, anyone can build a seven-figure business. I think this is one of the key themes for all of these types of people. They're always like oversimplifying everything. Mm. The honest thing of running a successful business is that, from our experience, it literally takes years <laughs> of doing, of working really hard, making mistakes and figuring things out. You can't just do something in three simple steps. Yeah. And I, but, I, I, but from a marketer's perspective, I understand that to make something hooky and catchy, you know, we do it with our podcasts and stuff. Like here's three ways you can do this thing. Um, <laughs> Probably with, with this podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, I, oh, but imagine if you did a podcast like, here's 10,000 things you can do across seven years to mm. maybe run an okay business. No one's going to listen to it. That'd be a good episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, a lot of these things are kind of oversimplified to make it sound catchy, yeah. but you, you, you need to understand the truth that 99% of successful businesses take years of doing thousands of different things and making mistakes to be somewhat successful. That's, mm -hmm. that's the truth, isn't it? Yeah. I think something that um, isn't good is that a lot of light is shone on these kind of unicorns like, uh, you know, tech start like Facebook mm -hmm. and and companies like that and like in our industry think companies like social chain that are like one day they're one employee then they're 10,000 the next day it's just they don't talk about the 500 social agencies in the last three years that mm. have set up and then they failed yeah and they don't exist anymore so yeah I think that's a really really good point so Dan do you have another one yes I do cool. so another lie or lie something that I don't agree with is um you should just increase your prices Oh, do you know what? That's so good. Have I that stolen it's all yours? So on my list. <laughs> yeah, completely agree. 
but yeah, I think um, I've heard a number of uh, kind of people saying this and I just don't agree with it mm. because I, I think for young, naive sort of business owners starting out, they just, it, again, it's oversimplifying mm. it. It's another thing of, oh, I'm not earning enough money. I don't have enough clients. So I'll just increase my prices. Mm. That's not a good idea mm. because one, you're going to increase your prices, but your the quality of what you're doing probably isn't in line with that. So you're going to lose customers and you're going to put other people off. Um, and it's just not... I think there's there's it's a bit of a trend over the last year or so for that to be business advice. Like, you're not making enough money, double your prices. And the reality is that's probably bad advice. Like... Uh, it it can be good advice it can be good advice in a way thinking of our previous episode about capacity planning mm. if you're always got too much work and you know you, you have to let customers down and say no that could be a time when it's like oh you know in terms of uh, supply and demand there's more demand than there is supply so let's increase the price whereas but a lot of the time the advice is given to the businesses or the people that, that don't have demand they haven't got enough work like I'm not, I haven't got any customers again. Well, double your prices. Yeah, it's literally the opposite of... Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, so then you'll have half as many opportunities <laughs> to, to get business yeah. and they still won't work with you. So yeah, I, I'm completely, I completely agree with this well, one. What I would say is, so instead of doubling your prices, I'd focus double <laughs> amounts of your energy in actually getting better at what yeah. you do. Double then, how good you are at what you do. Yeah, because then that will lead on to... Mm -hmm. uh, being able to double your prices yeah. because the demand for your yeah. service will increase. Double how good your service or product is. Yeah. You'll have double the amount of people that want it. And then you have the opportunity to double your prices. <laughs> yeah. Again, just double your prices. Again, sounds rubbish, but that's <laughs> what they should say. Oh, I think so many people are going to be put off from like starting businesses with listening to this episode because we're just saying, hopefully, do things for years yeah. and it might work. Yeah. Well, but I think it's far better to be realistic uh, than... Or, you know, don't forget, anyone listen to this, you could ignore all this advice and have this unicorn business that ends up being the next Tesla. Mm. But you probably won't, so. Yeah. Um, what other, anything else, what other lies have you heard, Lloyd, that uh, you So, very marketing one. You need to be on this platform. Otherwise, <laughs> you know, everyone's going to be on this. You, yeah. You'll fail if you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> yeah. There's no social mm. media platform or certain website you need mm. to be on to have success so some are there are very successful businesses massive businesses that aren't on twitter there are massive businesses that aren't on facebook there are massive businesses mm. that aren't on this website that this local guy at a networking meeting says you have to be on mm. and you have to pay him 20 pound a month to be on it mm. i think everyone has their own expertise and pushes what they know and what they're good at mm but your business doesn't necessarily need it. So don't listen to someone. If they're like, you've got to be on TikTok. Mm. At the moment, for, for a lot of businesses, I would say probably a good idea to explore TikTok, but you don't need to be on it. Mm. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. I think that, like you say, there's businesses that are like hugely successful just through email marketing that mm. a lot of people now would say that that's not going to work. Mm. I think this is, this is a trend, especially with marketers, though, because... Because there's so many new platforms coming out, because things change so all the time, marketers want to be the first to adopt everything because they think mm. that kind of first mover strategy of if I'm the first person to join this new platform and it blows up, mm. then I'll be like influential on there. Yeah. But because there's so many platforms, like when Clubhouse came around, yeah. some people invested crazy amounts of time because of the way the platform was built. You literally had to be on it live having a chat for it to, mm. to, to, to get any exposure. So people just spent so much time during... And marketers who were then experts in Clubhouse were telling all of their clients and their audience that they need to be on Clubhouse because that's mm. beneficial to them. They're not saying you have to be on Clubhouse because mm. your business actually has to be on Clubhouse. So like you said, we analysed Club, Clubhouse and realised it yeah. wasn't worth us investing the time or we didn't think so at that point. Mm. In three years, Clubhouse may adapt and change and we might think it's worth it. But... I just think, I think be aware of marketers that push, you have to do this, you have to be on this mm. because that's usually in their best interest or it's just what they know the most about. So they're saying you have to do this. I think this has been a shift in the way we communicate over the years because early on, 
uh, I definitely was one of the people that said, you got to be on LinkedIn. Mm. You got to be on Facebook, do Facebook ads because that was working for us. I was like, oh, it's going to work yeah. for everyone. It's what we felt most comfortable with. We knew we mm. could deliver value to clients on that because we were really good at it. And now I'm way more like, whenever we talk about, and all these podcast episodes, we kind of let, give context that, um, listen to this because this is what's worked for us, but it may not for you. There may be something better for you. Like mm. your skills may be matched with a different platform with a tip, different type of marketing. Your audience may not be on any of the platforms we're talking about. Mm. So Definitely take every piece of advice from marketers you hear with a pinch of salt, especially us, because we're just sharing. Yeah. This is what this podcast is all about, sharing our experiences. Yeah. I think I've realized the big marketing lie as well. What? And that's that the title of this, I think, is 10 marketing lies. And I haven't kept track of how many there are, but I think mm. we've doubled up. I don't think there's 10. No. So just another example how marketers lie to you. Yeah. Okay. 10 sounded good, so we put it yeah. in the title. Um, and I mean, before you said that, we could have just changed the title to the number it was yeah that we said and yeah that would have been fine too yeah but i want to lie to them <laughs> so, so we'll, still, we'll still name this this 10. is just to show you <laughs> even people you trust can lie to your face yeah um, uh, um you got any more then yeah i've got another one cool about who knows how many Not ten. <laughs> i've got another 10 cool. uh all of our attention spans are shrinking yeah so and i've again like i've fallen in the trap of saying this as well I think previously, everyone's attention spans are shrinking. I don't actually believe that. What I believe is our options are widening. And we have... Uh, Sounds good. Yeah, no, no, no. Like, if you think about it, our options for where our attention is are widening. Because I mentioned this earlier, because of the internet, we now have so much information accessible to us on so many different platforms that we have to divvy up that time accordingly. So it's making it more difficult for brands and marketers to get in front of someone and hold their attention because especially when you think of like TikTok. So TikTok has literally um, blown up through snackable, short, like 10, 20 second videos mm. that are endless. How can you compete with that? Mm. You know, it's, it's very difficult to compete with that when this algorithm is literally like manipulating you to stay on this platform for hours, swiping, swiping, swiping. It's difficult to get people's yeah. attention uh, because our options are... But it's interesting because, yeah, so, so like you're saying, our option, we've got options of what we want to give our attention to. But like YouTube and Netflix, people watch for hours. Yeah. And we don't say, oh... We got you got to make YouTube videos that are 30 seconds long or on Netflix. We need to change our programs to make them three minutes long because the content is good enough for that audience where people will watch it for hours. People say, oh, no one watches TV for six hours each evening anymore with our ads. You know, no one can concentrate. It's like they're concentrating on their favorite YouTuber for four hours yeah. in the same evening. So I, I think it's a very good excuse for people mm. who don't have the knowledge in how to get people's attention or can't create content good enough to go. Yeah, yeah. it'll have to be five seconds long because anything longer, no one will watch it. And I think being open, realizing this was a game changer for our business. And this is why we've shaped our whole business around creating marketing content and marketing campaigns that serve the end customer first, mm. rather than help the brands we want to work with first. Because if we just focused on this product brand coming to us and pushing their product, buy this product, buy this product. That may work in the short term, but eventually people are gonna get turned off and that's not what they wanna see. Like we said before, they wanna be educated, entertained, inspired with the content they're consuming. So this is why we really try and focus on, and I think all marketers should focus on what content do, you actually, do your customers actually want to listen to? Like take this podcast, for example. In this podcast, how often do we say to you, buy Knowlton services, become a customer, we'll help you with your marketing. We don't, we rarely say that because we know- Once, just only that time. Yeah, just that time. Hmm. We know that you won't like that, listeners and viewers. Like you're not interested in that. What, what we think, maybe we're wrong, you're interested in is learning from our experiences of marketing, what's working yeah. for us, what we think about the industry so that you can gain value from that first. And yes, we do have strategy behind this podcast. We do mention campaigns we've run, like the really cool mm -hmm. campaign we did with a top tier Netflix show recently in a global brand yeah. to kind of show you that we're good at what we do. And if you do ever want to work with us, you can. But most of it is focused on actually trying to provide value for you rather That's than... That's the funny thing. So you guys listen to us for like half an hour at a time. 
Um, and we've got really loyal listeners that listen to almost every episode. So thank you, everyone. But we could have done this podcast in a different way, just like selling our business. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, We'd look at the graphs and like, oh, they only listen for three minutes and then they go <laughs> off. And then we'd be going, your podcasts have got to be three minutes long <laughs> yeah. because no one wants to listen for longer than three minutes. That is so true. Like, no, actually, if you if you create a shit podcast people don't want to yeah. listen to, then it has to be three minutes long because they'll <laughs> give up after that. Yeah. But you know, Joe Rogan and some of the big mm. podcasters, they've had at some of the podcasts I listen to, there's been ones that are almost two hours long. Mm. And I put I and I even like I don't have time to listen to them in one go. Yeah. So I divvy up, but I go back to them because I have such a I, I have a long attention span for those things because it's so good. And people always come to us, so how long does this should this video be? And my they want a Quite often when we have like kickoff calls with clients, they want us to go on Instagram. It should be one minute 36. Mm. That's optimum time. The real answer is it should be as long as it is interesting. Mm -hmm. So if we haven't got much interesting stuff to say and we've got a really low budget to put into this and we can only make a brilliant video that's 12 seconds long, it should be 12 seconds. Mm. If we have a big budget and we have really great stuff uh, to say and to show people, it should be seven minutes. I think alarm bells always go for me when someone, because I've been speaking at events before and other speakers and stuff have said, it should be a three and a half minute video that's posted at 2 p.m. on a Tuesday on Instagram stories with three and a half hashtags. And it's like, what? That doesn't make any sense. Some of those details can make a very small difference. Mm. But if you're forgetting the sort of stuff we're talking about, the fundamental stuff, it's going to be like, so the time of day you post could have mm. an impact. It could by like 10% it might improve or or make it worse because your audience mm. isn't online but what we're talking about actually making content that's good enough for people to want to watch will make the thousand percent increase and I think to kind of not contradict what we're saying but I think that should definitely be your first focus focus on the core thing of actually producing content and marketing campaigns that people enjoy once you've got that like the foundations there then it's about making the incremental improvements of posting time or day or um, like how you'll promote. Like for example, this podcast, we've, we're constantly looking on how to improve and get more people to listen and watch this. We've recently realized that our TikTok clips are performing like the, the nine by 16 phone screen size are performing much better than our YouTube size 16 by nine. So we're going to try and push that more. So we now we've got the foundations, hopefully right, mm -hmm. of like, an interesting podcast to listen to about business and marketing that's value adding. Now we're like, right, what are those small changes we can make to, to, to move the needle? Yeah. Um, that is a really good point. And it is like, it's like a, a butterfly effect. So, so those small changes we're making can completely change the trajectory of the, the success of mm. this in our business. Like now knowing now that those TikTok videos perform 1% better. So we're going to push those more and focus more on that. Imagine the graph of like doing that to just sticking with the average stuff that wasn't working. And even, even I know we need to get better at this still. Mm. We need to get better at constantly testing and trying new things and testing new ways of doing things that will, will improve how things are performing. But I think as an action, if you're listening to this and you haven't tried or tested something new or analyzed how what you're currently doing is performing, you should look at that that's a that's a really important point and if someone says your video has to be one minute 32 seconds long say to them i'm not going to listen to you anymore mm. good advice probably... um i think that was really good is have we got anything more to say that is as good as that have you got more i've got one more oh, okay, can cool. i just say one more yeah it's, it's probably not as good as that but bonus. it's just an important one bonus porky pie marks uh, are telling you okay ready yeah 10 exit ah oh, yeah so there's a well-known marketer that's got a book called 10X, nice. called something like that. Um, and his whole mantra is 10X everything. So you've got goals to achieve this year. You want to do better, 10X them. You, you, you want to uh, improve at something, 10X it. And I think, again, this, is, this, this advice is damaging. Because one, it's doing that thing of oversimplifying everything. Just 10xing your goals isn't going to help you improve. There's a whole load of other work. Like that it could help you, it is it could help you improve to be more ambitious, yes. But once you 10x your goals, you then actually need a whole plan for how you're going to achieve those 10x results. So 
Um, that's another one that I hear thrown around a lot. I actually there. did it um, on my fitness pal with my calorie count. I 10 x it, uh, but I've been putting on weight. I don't get that. Yeah. How's that work? I don't know. I changed my goal to uh, to 20,000 calories a day. <laughs> that's confusing. But I haven't been losing weight. No. If anyone can help Lloyd, then please yeah. do. So I don't think that's good advice. I agree. Cool. I've really good advice, Dan. Uh, I don't know if there's 10. I think there was about eight. Um Possibly, but but that's in we tune with this you. episode about lying. Yeah. So yeah, we meant to do that. We'll keep it as ten, but yeah. you know, yeah, there's a handful for you. Yes, a handful wouldn't have been as good in the title if it just said a handful. <laughs> Maybe we will call it that. Maybe we've lied throughout this episode. Maybe <laughs> it's called that. Okay, should we? Should we see you next week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see you in your ears next week. Yeah. Or maybe we won't. Maybe we've lied. We're marketers. <laughs>